You know, it always blows my mind that like we had no idea. Let me put a little bit of my little bit of gap between. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. He uh, he he had no idea. I mean, I'm sure he had some idea because he wrote it, but about just how extraneous and superfluous and all that stuff it would be because it used to just be an hour oh, wow. if that and but that's when he came up with the intro ah. and then here we are averaging like two hours and 20 minutes now and the intro that he came up with from day one is just proving to be more and more true with every uh he had a vision yeah maybe i don't know <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he had insight into the future. Uh, maybe he did. Maybe he did. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, if you're ready, I'm ready. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody, to episode 129 of the Goulet Pencast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I am Drew. I'm Jenea. And there's Jenea. Brian's <laughs> not here today, but nevertheless, we are here to deliver to you this casual and informal tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show where we discuss with you what's going on here at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. Today, we're going to talk about how much we care about particular ink bottles. We're going to cover the history of the Visconti nib. We're going to talk about a bunch of crazy shimmering inks, and we're going to talk about our dream collaborations, yes. what we wish could connect to the fountain pen world, you know, compared to the world yonder. Um, <laughs> but before we do any of that, we are going to get started with some feedback. All right, I'm gonna go first. Okay. And then you can feed us back. All right. But feeding us back first first is Christy W. And Christy W writes in to tell us, <clears throat> the fact that you two don't know what Orange Julius is creates an immediate generation gap between Gen X and millennials. All right. Is that it? Or was it like a West Coast, East Coast? All right, first, Jenea, as, as a Gen Zer, <laughs> do, was... you, do you know what Orange Julius is? I don't. Okay. So I think it was, no, I don't either. Okay. Like, I think it was like an, a, an ice cream ish shop that sold like orange milkshakes, but they were like a standalone thing. Like, they had like, oh no. Uh, uh, what are those things you have in malls? Like the kiosk? The kiosk. Yeah. They had like a, a mall kiosk or something like that. I don't know. Or a shop. A, 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 not a shed, not a shop, a... A cart? Maybe a cart. I don't know. I'm looking for another word that's not there. <laughs> anyway, they had a thing. They sold some orange stuff, and I had, neither Brian nor I knew about it. So I don't know. Maybe it is a generational thing. I don't know. I've seen their signs in the windows of Dairy Queen, so I think Dairy Queen bought them out, and now they make orange oh. Julius's if you want I've them. never heard of that. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, maybe I'm that's sure it's it. it's delicious. Christy W., you might be onto something there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rat3072 says, Opus 88 does make a mini pocket version in several color slash style choices. Even at the mini pocket scale, they hold a silly amount of ink, LOL. So last <laughs> week we were talking about um, Japanese eyedropper pens, like, you know, pens you can barrel fill, but then they have like that shut off valve gotcha. that stop them, like Opus 88. Yeah. And I was like, I don't need that telephone pole full of ink. I want like, a, I like the filling mechanism, but yeah. I want a mini version. According to Rat here, uh, <laughs> they already make one, which is really cool. That is cool. And even a small one would still hold, like he says, a, a silly amount of ink, as they say, a silly amount of ink. Um, so I'm all for it. I'm going to look into that and see if, but you know what I did? Adrian has always been such a huge proponent of Opus 88. Really? The Mini is one that she has owned for a while oh, and wow. has been trying to get us to carry it. And everybody's like, all right, Adrian, okay. And now I'm like, Adrian, I'm sorry. That sounds really cool. So she I need to might get, be one of something. Yeah, I think she might be. So we'll look into that. <laughs> um, anyway, number three for me is coming from Turbo Steven, I think. It looks it looks like it might be German. I'm not sure. But yeah. um, Turbo Steven, I'm going to just say, <laughs> says, and this person is a bigger fan of the 2000 than Brian is, so get ready for this. Ooh. I grabbed the classic Lamy 2000 in every nib size they offer. Extra fine, fine, medium, oblique, medium, broad, oblique, broad, double broad, oblique, double broad. Oh, my gosh. It is for sure my favorite pen. You think? <laughs> Steven, the oblique nibs are really fun. My EDC is a fine nib, but I also have some vintage models from the 70s or 80s um, when they did the nib in 18 karat gold. They later reduced it down to 14K to lower production costs, I think. That's pretty cool. Those vintage 2000s are pretty cool. They're mostly unchanged, Jenea. They used to have like an L kind of on the 
top or bottom, wherever the metal disc is. I yeah. think that's the bottom. Yeah, because the top is just that shiny black. So yeah, on the bottom where the knob is, you just have a little black L, which is actually kind of cool. Oh, I kind of like nice. it. What they should put there is the darn nib size because we were talking last week yeah. about how you can't see the you nib size know. unless you like, disassembled the nib yeah i didn't even think about that yeah so brian actually had well, like half of his pens had like just like a piece of tape on them with it. no 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 he written on them with pencil he just written on the back that with pencil sense. yeah i mean yeah pencil it doesn't hurt anything you gotta know so yeah that's it for me in terms of feedback but janae's got a couple she's gonna share all right so braylon trail 8253 said i currently have a turkey hammock sticker on my rear window of my car i would definitely wear a pen cast shirt so someone asked us about swag last week. I love swag. Swag's good. Turn but, my swag on, you know. Heck yeah. No, but the <laughs> only thing is like shirts though, we'd have to carry like a bazillion different sizes, like yeah. physically in the warehouse and all that. Yeah. yeah. It seems, but mugs we could maybe do, but there was definitely some interest in there. What yeah. I'm really impressed here by Braylon, the turkey hammock sticker, that's like currently on the car, meaning, cause we, we haven't sold that one by itself in a while. Yeah, yeah. So that means it's been on the car for a while and yeah. it's still there. I have stickers that are like supposed to be car stickers that have fallen off. They peel so off, yeah. I'm pretty impressed if the, that that the turkey is still hammocking. So <laughs> I wonder if it's on the inside or the outside. Oh, I think the that. Would no, make no. A if it's on the out, if it's on the inside, you wouldn't be able to see it. Oh yeah, you're right. Because it'd be not... like mm. it'd just be white. So I'm guessing it's on the outside. But either way, durable. I did not know how durable these stickers that we buy um, would be on the car. So yeah. this is this is nice information. That is cool. I love I love merch personally. You know? well, what would you uh, do? You, would would you think like should we do a mug like mugs we could do? Yeah, t-shirts probably not. T-shirts probably nothing not. with sizes. Yeah. It's just oh. I think like a cool like maybe a pen sleeve. This is just me. I oh, we could definitely do a pen sleeve. A Rickshaw could do anything. Yeah, I like the washi tape. Ironically, washi decorate tape? my computer. We could do pencast washi tape. You know, you do have a lot of washi tape. A lot of places. I I'll love say to that. <laughs> washi is my thing. There we go. <laughs> Well, we're not going to slow that down anytime soon. <laughs> it's so easy. All right. Next is Harmony Bat. Okay. Lots of animals. Booberry is the king of cereals. I am not taking any questions at this time. All right. So. I've never had Booberry cereal. I, you know, I put this on here, right? You know, I put this on here. So. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette. Oatmeal supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like cold food, especially cereal. Um, oatmeal. It's the same thing except hot. Janae is an oatmeal fanatic. Not, not <laughs> like she. Yeah, I remember. I I was in my office minding my own business, and she's carrying on a conversation with some with someone, <gasps> and I just hear oatmeal supremacy, yeah. and I just start cracking up because <laughs> there was so much passion behind that statement. <laughs> if I had to eat cereal. I would say Reese's Puffs or would you Cookie Crisp. Would you microwave it? After? No, it would just be a dessert. <laughs> okay. A perfect dessert. To okay, but for breakfast, you were like warm breakfast or no breakfast? Facts. Okay. I got to get, Okay. I got to be warmed up to start Do you my like day. flavored oatmeal or are you just kind of yes. like a, you add a, you add a bunch maple, of crap to it? Honey, cinnamon, maple, or apples and cinnamon. Like, Are you okay with like the packet or are you just like, are you, are you bougie with your oatmeal? I can do packet. Okay. Quaker right. oats. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I saw a cereal thing. I'm like, oh, I got to give that to Janae. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, they're going to be mad at me. I do I do, I do. do have a, a friend who is just, when Halloween rolls around and the Boo Berry shows up, he is all about it. Or at least he was. I need to check in with him, see if he's still a Boo, Boo Berry fanatic. But yeah. uh, he he once was. <laughs> but no, it's 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 very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. Boo Berry, Count Chocula, Frankenberry, th those are all yeah. just like, whew. I'm not too into sweets, which is actually a great segue into the next question. Yeah. So Jessica Haley said, Vegemite, am I pronouncing that right? Vegemite. Vegemite on hot buttered toast is the king of breakfast. It's meant to be a fine smear, definitely not meant to go on thick. I've never had it. I have some in my pantry. <gasps> it was sent to me by a Pencast listener, actually. Oh, awesome. Um, and I uh, haven't opened it. I'm like I'm waiting for so I keep wanting to bring it over to my brother's house when we're all there like watching you know a fight or something yeah and uh I keep forgetting because I want to see their reaction to yeah. it but what I should bring it in is come is, is I should what I should do is bring it in here yeah and let you and Brian have some yeah you should I looked it up uh, and it said it's more savory I yeah was like, that's right up my it's alley. like a yeasty salty <laughs> situation which all right 
I don't know. It sounds peculiar, but you yeah, know. I definitely, yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, we need to just have that and some booberry and uh, have ourselves some breakfast. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that about does it for the feedback section of the pencast, and we're going to move into some new stuff. All right. All right. What's new? Um, well, as we were just talking about, Shown Design. We have a new Shown Design pen that is, uh, at least for a limited time, exclusive to us here at the Goulet Pen Company. This time, though, we're doing a Pocket 6 in Ian Shown's faceted version. So it is a pocket six still same, the same dimensions and all that stuff, but it is uniquely faceted all around the barrel and the cap in a really, really fascinating way. It looks almost uniform, but then you look closely and it seems random, but then you look closely -er and it looks uniform again. It blows my mind. It kind of melts my brain, but it's a beautiful <laughs> pen. Yes, it um, is. The finish is called Bismuth Crystal, and this is an aluminum anodized finish, so it is wildly inconsistent in the best of ways. You'll get purple, you'll get green, you'll get purple and green, you'll get mostly purple with a little bit of green, you'll get mostly green with a little bit of purple. We photographed a multitude of them to give you an idea of the range, so hopefully there's no surprises there. But uh, you won't know what you get until you get it. But also, no one will have what you have. So, period. Added bonus, yeah. <laughs> um, $260 for the Yovo Steel Nib version, and then $265 version for the $265 for the Monarch version. The Monarch version, what? Yes. So Ian Schoen of Schoen Design came up with a brand new nib. And I mean, when I say brand new nib, I mean no one has done this before. The Monarch nib, which we will feature more heavily in the next episode, is essentially an all-in-one unit. It is the nib, it is the feed, it is the feed nib housing. It is one unit which allows the team over at Shown Design to completely control every little aspect of their manufacturing, tuning and everything, making sure that there are no variables yeah. um, that could happen when inserting, reinstalling, removing, it all stays together. The nib itself gets threaded into the section. It is not a plastic housing that the nib is attached to. It's the nib itself. It is one piece of milled titanium, machined titanium, that they make this out of. They bore out the middle, they stick an Ultem feed in there, which is another very unique thing. There's yeah. really, um, it's, there's not a lot of those being manufactured here in the U.S., if any. So, big deal. Very expensive. It does, you know, it is a, you know, very premium thing. But uh, one thing that I loved, I was talking to Glenn about it. Yeah. Glenn's a huge car nut, right? And he was photographing the Monarch nib. And I looked at it and being completely ignorant myself, I was like, this kind of looks like a like an automotive shot because just the mm -hmm. the curvature and then the monarch engraving on the yeah. nib, it kind of looked just like the back end of a car. Cool. And he just turned to me and he's like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm. He said the whole time he was photographing it, he was photographing it like <laughs> the close up detail cool. of a car because he, he was like, I, I look at nibs all the time and I've never seen something so, because he looks, when he looks at nibs, he looks really close because he's our photographer, right? Yeah. He zoomed in so far and he's like, this thing you can tell was engineered with an eye that, wow. you know, knew what they were doing. So, that's awesome. I could keep on going. Glenn was just over the moon with the details of this pen. So, awesome. excited to have that available to you. Uh, moving on to two new platinum families. So, the platinum Izumo which is an ebonite pen, which also is covered in Urushi lacquer, is now available here for $796. The Izumo also has the Platinum President nib, which is my favorite nib of the, well, not my favorite nib, my second favorite nib, because they did come out with a very limited one um, a year or two ago. Oh, wow. But as far as what's available now, this is my favorite nib. Um, you've got a black pen with a blue highlight Urushi, a black pen with a beige highlight of Urushi, and then a black and green. All three look outstanding. I love just a black Urushi pen with those highlights around the trim. I think they look stunning. We'll obviously have pictures for you. And um, you can get those for $7.96, like I said. Uh, it's a good beefy pen, but lightweight because it's just ebonite. It's not a, not too heavy. And then finally, the 3776 celluloid collection. Some of these we've had before. Um, the Caracusa. So this is a blue celluloid with engraving all throughout it, like kind of like a yeah. uh, leafy sort of ivy yeah, looking pattern, so. but it's filled with silver. So it's not just, you know, plain engraving. They actually backfill all the engraving with silver. So that one is the more expensive one at $1,040. But coming in at $432, less than half, you can get 
um, a celluloid pen for, golly, that's insane for a celluloid pen. $432, that's a steal. Okay. Yeah, that's gorgeous, too. Um, the Cherry Blossom is a pink celluloid. Now, this is nitro celluloid. This is like the real celluloid, the flammable stuff. Um, cherry Blossom, which is pink with a you know some white highlights, and then Midnight Blue Ocean, which is a nice deep blue, both for $432. Um, these are the 3776 models, so you'll see the different nib there. Um, that's it. I need to stop. That was plenty. <laughs> new stuff. Go check it out. We've got a lot of new stuff on our Coming Soon page as well. But then we've also got some new stuff that Jenna is going to share with us. Yeah. So the Retro 51 Tornado Rollerball and Sea Turtle Rescue, which side note, that pattern, the acid etched sea turtle shell, that would go good on some boots. Faux leather. Yes, obviously no real no sea real. turtles. No real. We got to protect yes, them. Yes. But you know, alligator, snakeskin, the design is chic. Yeah. It'll slay. I like, I, I mean, just the vibe of the sea turtle is more of yeah. a vibe I'd like to represent exactly. rather than a gator vibe. Like, I don't bring that. Exactly. I bring a sea turtle vibe. Calming. Yeah. Adorable. 100%. I don't and, know about the adorable, but okay. Oh, they're so cute. Especially the snapping turtles. What? I don't know. It's like they're so mean. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Their little faces and their shells. They're so cute. They are beastly dinosaur monsters. They're misunderstood. They will take a finger in a second, <laughs> Janaea. Are you kidding me? I feel like they remind, snapping turtle. they remind me of me. Cute, what? but a little crazy. I am. I have not seen that side of you. I do not wish to see that side of you. I hope I never see the y'all are too sweet. horrific snapping turtle i will i will endeavor to stay that way janaya my god <laughs> snapping turtles snapping cute. Turtles. oh my god all turtles deserve love um, i mean yeah but far away love okay that's reasonable i don't you know admire I, from afar I've, I've seen one of those like i've seen someone pick up a snapping turtle and their neck can just yeah go it extends anywhere you will like, be surprised you're not, their you're power not, you're not safe they like, get a bad rep but they're uh, awesome I feel like, okay, okay. <laughs> Janaea, <laughs> snapping turtle. Right. With each uh, turtle rescue sold, a donation is made to the Sea Turtle Conservancy. Which There's is nice. A, yeah, you know, protect the turtles. They didn't do anything. All that plastic and pollution. We got to save them, you know? Yeah. All right. So the next one is the Monograppa Elmo 01 Deep Sea Fountain Pen. So this is one of our newest GUI exclusive to join Barrier Reef and Beach. Um, it's $316 and it features a Yoho Steel nib. It's beautiful. Lots of different color variation. Um, and kind of like the, the Bismuth Crystal, you can kind of get your own unique pen. Nobody else will have it. That's a fact. All right, well, that does it for the new stuff. Um, let's talk about some company updates. All right. All right, so this week, by the time this video airs, you will perhaps have seen um, the video on the new Lamy All-Stars for 2024. So Brian did a video showcasing those. That is available now. If you haven't seen it, you can move over after you finish this, of course. You can move over there, or you can take an intermission. You can take a light break between the time, you know, and then go check out the video. Come back, join with us again. Um, and nothing else going around the office other than the fact that it is spring break this week and no one's here. I know. Like, this is Monday when we're doing this. We're recording extra early this week. So who knows what's going to happen by Friday. But um, right now, like, it is a ghost town it here. It is. I looked at the calendar this morning and it was just like out, 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 out. I know. So people taking that long weekend. But uh, you and I are here. We're here. Hold I, hope down you, the I hope you're not just here because we knew we were doing the pen cast. No. Okay. I have things to get done. Good. All right. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> good. Well, anyway, that will not change our availability to you, obviously. We have plenty of customer care folks here today. We yeah. have plenty of people in the warehouse shipping your orders. But, uh, you know, it's spring break, so people are taking off. But apart from that, nothing going on. Business as usual. Yep. Let's talk about some Qs and some As now. All right. You ready to kick us off with I the A's and the Q's and the Q's and the A's? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Evergreen Elephant asks, do you care for ink bottle design? Because I do. I can't buy an ink with a boring or unesthetic bottle, which includes all noodlers, Atlas, and Private Reserve. Hmm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I definitely do care. Yes, I do. It helps me choose what to be passionate about because I can't just be passionate about everything. I would run out of steam. I would be nothing. Um, so, yeah, um, 
I will say, if you go on to the What's New section of our website, we don't have them in just yet. Maybe we will by Friday, but I doubt it. The Endless Alchemy Bottles. Yes. Um, I haven't encountered them enough to really judge whether or not I'm a fan or not, but they are definitely different. They are definitely new. Yeah. They look like magician flasks. Yeah, they or really like, do. <laughs> they look like potion bottles, yeah. which, I, which I love. I think that's super cool. Well, Alchemy. Um, yeah, very much. They're, they hit the nail on the head there. They did. So check those out. I, jury's still out. I'd like to know what you think about them. But as far as the ones that I've had to interact with, I, I've got some. I've got some thoughts. So there's like ones I like the design of. So because we're just saying like boring or unesthetic bottle. So yeah, there are benefits to the unesthetic bottles. I, I should say, and, and Noodler's like functionally is fine. It gets the job done. Yeah. Um, and I do like the profile of the Noodler's bottle because it is narrow and tall. Yeah. And I might sneeze. Oh. I might not though. Okay. I think it's gone. Okay. Okay. We're okay. <laughs> I do like the, the the taller and slimmer ones because when you think about it, shorter and wider bottles, when those reach a certain level, they become more, they, yeah. they become harder to use more quickly yeah. than a taller, more narrow bottle I does. would agree. Um, so I do think that makes sense. And the Monteverde 30 mil is actually kind of like that too. It's a little bit taller and more mm -hmm. narrow. So I get that. I do dig it. Aesthetically though, they're often not a whole lot to look at. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'm going to come back to that. As far as just looks go, obviously you have to say Roshizuku because we all know Roshizuku are beautiful. And then I also like the Diamine 50 mil bottles yeah. in the holiday version with the little feet. Oh, I do like those. Those look cool. Those look. There's nothing else like them. Yeah. And I honestly didn't think they would continue with those. I remember when they first did them back when they had the um, red edition initial inkvent calendar, and they did the okay. full bottles. I was like, that's cool. They're not going to keep doing that though, because oh, wow. those they those did full bottles. They always do full bottles. Like they oh, um, well, I every see what you're saying. every yeah they do the they do the oh yeah sorry it wasn't full bottle for the ink vent gotcha. it was the full bottles that came gotcha, after the gotcha, ink vent. Gotcha, 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 yep. gotcha. Yep. Um, but I didn't think it was sustainable. I'm like they're probably just doing. It. They're not going to keep up with this. Yeah. These are going to be. But no, they definitely have. They keep on with these and they're really cool. Yeah. Pelican Edelstein bottles. We've talked about them before. They're hardy. They're solid. They're beautiful. Yeah. Love them. Um, and then uh, Ferris Wheel Press. They're older bottles that look like orbs. I love those. Yeah. And the newer bottles, they look great too. Functionally, eh. But I don't think anybody can argue that they don't look beautiful. So I'm going to wrap this up into one favorite. I'm going to tell you what that is. All right. Because this one is both... Now, you're not going to be able to buy it because they don't make it anymore. But this one is both functional and pretty. And this is the Oroshizuku Mini Bottle. Ooh. So these were like, oh, man, I should have brought one in. Um, I have some on my desk. They they did, at one point, they made Oroshizuku Mini Sets where there would be three inks in one little case. Nice. And they were they, I mean, not as pretty as the big Oroshizuku bottle, but they were small, but also kind of tall and narrow. So they, they oh, hit perfect. my points. They Yeah, they were tall and narrow. Like, I mean, tall-ish. You know, they were not big bottles, but yeah. they, that, that same form factor, right? Yeah. And But they also had that nice Oroshizuku prettiness. Yeah. So those, those, I don't know. I don't know why I like them, but I do. And uh, I wish they would kind of bring them back because I think yeah. that just kind of having the whole few bottles thing rather than... Going all in on one was actually right. pretty cool. They used to, they did them for, they sometimes, they used to do them annually, I think. But, and then they did another set when the new colors came out. I don't know if they're going to do it again, but I'd like for them to. And then, of course, any bottle with a uh, a cup in them yes. so that you can, like, tip it upside down, fill the cup. Yeah. Like, any bottle that so has convenient. that built in, love it. Instant win for me there. Brilliant. Now, again, I think the prettiest bottle that has those cups in them would be the Namiki blue and the Namiki black or pilot blue, pilot black, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Those I think look cool and have the cup. What about you? That was a good answer. You got some feelings? I do. A, a couple feelings. Mm -hmm. As far as bouginess goes. Yeah, we go. Bring uh, it. Jack Herbon, 1670. Oh, yeah. It gives a timeless revolutionary vibe with the ceiling wax. With the, yep, yep. I and love then the little that. wax cap. Yes. Yep. So classy. And there's a little like ribbon that comes down yes, and it they like, like cross it. Yeah. I think that's so classy, so bougie if you want yeah. to impress your friends. I like that one a lot too. Boom. Put it on the table. Mm -hmm. They'll love it. That's pretty. <laughs> and it's it's hefty too. Yeah. It's like it's got that solid got a solid weight to it. Exactly. It's just quality. You mm -hmm. can put it on your desk and it'll look like a decoration. Mm. I like stuff like that where it could have multiple uses. Yeah. 
Um, the other one is the Colorverse ink bottles. The but, little comet shaped ones? Yes. Yeah. And I only like them because I feel like when I flip it over, you see real quick if it's shimmer or not. Yes. That shimmer at the bottom, I'm like. Those are weighty too. Those might they be. They are. Those might. <sighs> They're heavy. I think, I wonder if that those are as heavy as the Edelstein bottles because both of them mm. weigh a ton. Those are like, it would be between those. If I had to pick the heaviest okay. bottles we have, it's probably between Edelstein and the big color verse. But I like that though. Oh, heck yeah. I love that. Bang for your buck. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Now, I do not like the other color verse sizes, like the the 40 mil, I think. Yeah. Like, I like that They're size. Tiny. I think that the big Comet bottles are just too much ink. Really? Oh, too much. Way too much. I fill my pins up so much. Oh, my God. That's too much ink for me. I don't want to commit to that. It's not about filling. It's about commitment. commitment. I, don't, I don't need that. I understand what you mean. So I like, and also from a sales perspective, the smaller yeah. bottles tend to sell more. So That makes perfect sense, But. Though. uh I wish they made like an in between because the, 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 there's the little comet bottle that's yes, way 15, too small. I think. Yeah, I wanted to make like a middle right, b- between I agree. the two. I actually That'd agree. Nice. Um, and then I also just like anything I can fill my pen from, like a wide enough opening because I feel like I get a better fill when I can do it from the bottle versus like 100%. an ink file. Or, you know, I could always do ink syringe, but. Is there such a thing as too wide though? Like, have you seen the private reserve <laughs> buckets? <laughs> That's no. like you could take you could stick a soup ladle in that thing. Put three pins in at once and go. You crazy. could do ten at once. Now <laughs> I will say it it does make it really easy to fill. Yes, like really easy. Which is to what fill. I like. Yeah, the minimal mess. That's what I prefer. Yeah, but honestly, as long as I can fill that pin from the bottle, I really don't have too much of a preference. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to one of your preferences. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> dive right into. Jenea territory here. Yes. Um, and I was hanging on to this one because I was like, you know, one day Jenea's going to be on this pen cast and I'm going to save this one for her. <laughs> so whoever RE-ZZ3DK is, you asked this question a thousand years ago, but um, I've been sitting on it. So hypothetical, a random ink company has approached you with an offer. You must create a new special edition variant of one of their basic inks. Using this ink as a base, you can add any crazy properties to it. Shimmer, sheening, scent, chroma shading, chameleon, whatever. They have somehow figured out a way for this to happen and not impact the ink, how it handles, how it writes, you know, unless you want it to do something. So what yeah. ink do you pick and what crazy things do you spice it up with? I love this question. Mm. I'm so excited that you gave me parameters. I would say if Warringal had like an invisible clear ink and then using one of their potions... So you can like drop it on there and a new message comes up. Oh, okay, okay. And it's so, like glittery, beautiful, amazingness. You don't know what it is until you drop that potion on it. So it's like somebody could leave you a note for privacy and then only you have the potion to unlock it. Interesting, so would you like brush it on? No, you just write it in your nib. It's like secret agent spy level ink interesting you know you digging through someone's stuff and you're like oh there's nothing here i like that but then you know only you have the key to unlock the message i got that so so let's see i would write <laughs> i would write a message yes and you would know that there's a message there but how would you get the would you be writing with the crazy cool thing or would be i you okay okay so i'm writing with the the, the pretty thing but you don't know what's pretty until you come exactly. and like just like uh, draw over top of it. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Just like that. Nice. I feel like it'd just be so like something. We need cool more to... secret agent D inks. I think so. No doubt I think about that. That that is like something for people that are really into it. So yeah. it's like not the normal person would have that. I think it'd be fun just to like write a letter and then just add something secret somewhere. Like you know, do a yeah. do a, do a fun letter, but then maybe like do a little silly drawing exactly. with invisible. Like hey. I wrote your letter, but also there's something secret. Exactly. Like, just there's something secret in here, too. So <laughs> go find it. It's like invisible ink on iPhone where they send you a message. I'm an like, Android guy. Oh, I don't yeah. know. What, what's an iPhone? <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't, even, like, I don't even get to heart my messages. Oh, my gosh. My mom sends me stuff like that sometimes. Um, it'll just be like a message, and then I'll have to, like, scratch it off, kind of. And then it'll be, like, something silly. Oh, cool. I think it's fun. That's what that I'm is like, fun. a little fun message, you know. Make sure you use your ink and see what... It's at the end. <laughs> That'd be a good way to sell some ink too, because you have Absolutely. to like use a lot to co- to open up the message. You know, secret code if you have the potion. That is pretty cool. Secret I think code so. ink. Yeah, I, I just don't, don't use it for like grocery lists, because then you and forget your potion. You'll I have a hard enough time remembering groceries, so yeah, that wouldn't work for me. 
<laughs> and if I also could choose, I like the document, Deatramentous inks. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and add some shimmer, duochrome, gold, and then a complementary color. So if it's like fall gray, like orange or red, and it's a classy ink, so your doctor could write it and it's like jazzed up. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sure your boss will believe that doctor's note. <laughs> you know what? I can't think of, I wonder if there's any gray ink that actually has sheen. I don't think there is. It kind of hit me. As soon as you said that, I'm like. They're, grays are like classy. Come on. Yeah. You don't but, have to be, but, be classy like, there, There's gray with shimmer, but yeah. I don't know if there's any gray that sheens. I don't know if. Maybe, maybe just kind of by nature of it, it's a less saturated black, so they can't really add. I guess sheet. that makes sense. I don't know, but I like your, I like where you're going with that. Yeah. Well, so you said gray with red or orange. Yeah. Orange and gray sound awesome. It would be beautiful. I've like, had a vision. I feel like I've seen some orange and gray stuff. Yeah. I don't know if it was like equipment or clothing, or something but i i can visualize orange and gray yeah. and that is a really cool combination oh yeah i agree that's a good idea i think we should do it i like that one <laughs> and also like yeah the the document inks everybody loves them they're great but they're not like they're more utilitarian yeah you know to to, they create, are. to create like a fun document ink like yeah that's What's not that for that's a fun doctor yeah a doctor that's not like other doctors <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Um, <laughs> I didn't come up with anything for this one. Uh, okay. I think that anything I could come up with, I'm like that probably already exists somewhere. So I'm just I'm gonna echo what you said. Let's give me a give me some any gray with okay. some sheen to it. Like yes. Um, let's just go with diamond earl gray, like our most popular gray. Yeah. And let's add some orange sheen. That I want. Be awesome. I want. I want a gray with. You have totally turned me. I want a. I want a gray with an orange sheen. Yeah, I've never seen it. No, I, I, it, I don't know if it's possible, but <laughs> according to this hypothetical. Anything's possible. Yes, so we're going to go with that. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. All right. All right. Give me another one. So oh, we got a twofer here. Yeah, so All should right. I read it? Yeah, just re read them both. Okay. So Teresa Harris, um, Travel by Books. I know that's right. What is the history of Visconti nibs? Who makes them and how have they changed over the years? This is a great question for me because I don't know. But read Marcos too. Oh, I'm sorry. And why was there a little fanfare when Visconti began making in-house nibs? Proprietary nibs are always lauded and Visconti makes many of our grill pens, yet seem to have little attention when they made their own. All right. So that is a twofer about Visconti nibs. So obviously I had to, we have to address that. <laughs> um it's just, it was kind of weird, like, to have two questions about the history of Visconti nibs yeah. in the same, because um, these these were pulled from the uh, YouTube community page. Cool. So, I don't know if there was just some Visconti news in the circulation, but uh, either way, we'll approach Teresa's um, question about history first. All right. So, I got, um, I talked to um, our friends over at Coles of London, the U.S. distributor for Visconti, to make sure these dates were correct, and they confirmed with me that in 1988... Visconti started with 18 karat and 14 karat nibs made by Bach in Germany. Mm. So that was 88, and they had both 18 and 14 karat, which I did not know. Yeah. And then in 2010, they ditched the new, the, they ditched gold. They stopped making gold nibs, and they switched to palladium. Oh. Which, to my knowledge, and no fountain pen company has ever done. I wow. think the, when we first started carrying Visconti, they had these 23 karat palladium nibs. Wow. Which honestly felt pretty much just like gold. Yeah. Some people said they could tell. I couldn't tell. Um, but that was a big deal. Like palladium nibs. You know, that was kind of Visconti's selling point. They're like, yeah. hey, we're the only people with palladium nibs. Yeah. So that was in 2010. They had the palladium nibs also made by Bach. So Bach made the gold nibs, then they switched and had Bach start making the palladium 23 karat nibs on the Homo sapiens. And then nine years later in 2019, they replaced the 18 karat, sorry, the 23 karat palladium nib. They stopped doing the palladium. I remember we had it at that time, you know, this yeah. wasn't too long ago. And uh, they went back to Bach with 18 karat gold nibs again. Hmm. So they started off with 14 and 18 with Bach, went to 23 palladium with Bach, and then went back to 18 again from Bach. Um, and then one year later, this seemed to be kind of just a little bit of a holdover because in 2020, one year after they switched back to the gold, they launched 18 karat and 14 karat again with their in-house nibs. Oh, wow. So Visconti now is making their own nibs 
not being made by Bach or Yovo or any of those other companies, Schmidt, um, they're making them um, in Italy. So that's a big deal. And they are sometimes, they're both the same relative size, but uh, the 14 and 18 karat nibs now have different imprints on them. And you'll see them kind of just on different pens, you know, depending yeah. on which one, uh, which model they're using. So there we go. That That is the history. And, you know, hopefully I've visualized that enough for you. But uh, 1988, 2010, 2019, and 2020 were the big transition years for Visconti and their history of nibs. Cool. So about the fanfare, because as we yeah. learned in 2020, they came out with the in-house nibs. And yes, that is a big deal, as Marco Phillips mentioned. And yes, that's reason to celebrate um, in many cases. And they, they did celebrate in a lot of ways because it was a big deal. But I can only speak to the communication that I had with our U.S. distributor, Coles yeah. of London. When they first rolled out these nibs, they sent a bunch of them to us beforehand to test, to make sure. They wanted feedback. They wanted a lot of opinions you know, from their retailers. And I'm sure we weren't the only ones. They wanted to make sure this got done right because... You know, while Visconti has had plenty of criticism about their nibs in the past, um, are at least the U.S. folks that represent that brand try so, so very hard and are committed so, so fully to making sure that the nibs are as good as they have it in their power for them to be. And I can guarantee that. I, I know them over there, and they have done so much to make sure that uh, they can be their best. So when they launched these nibs, there was no exception to that. They launched them first to the retailers to get opinions. And then they, you know, obviously did the full launch later after they went back to Visconti, gave them all that feedback and tried to fine tune these as best they can. Yeah. Um, so I would say that that's probably one of the reasons it wasn't just this big here, here, Hey, here we go is because that Visconti or the U S retailers, I'm not sure, depending on what country you are in, you might've had a different level of fanfare. I'm not sure, but they were really committed to making sure this got done right. And from what I understand, the objective wasn't to just kind of make this big celebratory launch and say, look what we did. It was more to just make the best nibs that they can make and, you know, try to get a little bit of feedback, you know, in their version one, so that the version two was better, so the version three was better. So it just was a very iterative change and they wanted to consistently improve. So there wasn't really one part where they were like, yes, we did it, you know, hooray for us. Yeah. And they still continue to work hard to improve them and, you know, make adjustments as best they can. So that was my overall um, takeaway from their launch and their subsequent, you know, kind of just carrying of their in-house made nibs. But I will say that, yes, making in-house nibs is extremely a big deal. And it's yeah. very difficult to do, very time consuming, very expensive and absolutely deserves praise and um, celebration. But uh, I think that that kind of took a back seat to just making sure that they were as good as they could be, you know? Yeah. So I think okay. I think that's cool, yeah. And there aren't too many people that do that. You know, Lamy makes their own nibs, Pelican makes their own nibs, We're as far as European companies. Um, let's see, Tibaldi, I think. But, you know, I'm, we're getting into territory that I'm not sure of. Montegrappa, you know, uses Yovo nibs. So yeah. even some of the most prolific Italian manufacturers, you know, don't have in-house nibs. So yeah, certainly a big deal, certainly expensive. Aurora makes their own nibs. That's a big deal. Yeah. So, um, but overall in the industry, they are few and far between. So uh, definitely a big deal from Visconti. They definitely do deserve celebration, but equally, I think that they deserve more celebration and appreciation for just continuing to improve and being yeah. willing to improve. Absolutely. So I, I like to celebrate that even more than I do just the fact that they're making them is yeah. just their commitment to improving. So hats off to them for that, for sure. Um, do you have any uh, experience with Visconti? Have you uh, got your hands going? If you, if you don't know, Jenea, you know, hasn't been here a year yet. So yeah. still working through, you know, her experience bucket, you know, and trying to fill that with a lot of context. Have you actually got your hands on a Visconti for a prolonged period of time yet? No, not really. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. I That's why I'm like, this is a great insight. For yeah, me. no, it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot of history there for sure. Awesome. Um, and, uh, but they're fun to write with. Yeah. They are. They're, they're beautiful. They are definitely That's what beautiful. I like. All right. Um, let me throw another question at you. Um, question number four comes to us from our friend Serendipity. Ooh. This one specifically says, Jenea question. <laughs> and serendipity knows Janae already because we're kind of venturing back into the same territory. <laughs> Please tell us all about the glitter potions in order from which clog the least to which clog the most. I want to get one, but I'm scared. I could only make, 
I am a cat work in one pen, but I really want to make, but I really want frost or mind control. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I didn't follow directions. Oh, I know. <laughs> I had about a 50 50 ratio. Um, and I will say that's. That ratio isn't good for keeping your feed unclogged. I believe they recommended a 10%. It's like one out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I will say I Am A Cat is packed with glitter and yeah. shimmer. Um, and so unless you're using like a broad nib, it's kind of hard to see all that or, you know, not have a clogged feed. But for me, I truly feel like the potions, they're – they're almost light if you follow directions. If you follow directions, I don't think it will give you any issues if you use like a medium or a broad nib. Um, my favorite is Frost and Flame. I put them in everything. Um, but like I said, like take that with a grain of salt. I don't follow directions at all. I just want the most glitter humanly possible. Have you ever used two different types of glitter? Absolutely. You have? Yeah. Oh my God. I want red. I want blue shoes. I think that's what it's called. Frost. I want everything. It's silver shoes. Excuse me. They should do a, you know, you should, we should like sell a sample vial of potions where it's like five potions mixed together Absolutely. and just call it Janaea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even know what color that would be. It'd just be a rainbow. All of them. Yeah, it would be. Honestly, that sounds Beautiful. kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then only put the right amount in there. Don't be like me. Um, But yeah. Well, it'd be like, it'd be like, you know, you're ordering at a restaurant and like you've got that like. One guy that always comes in and orders something so it gets named after him, you yes. know, because he does it so often. <laughs> you know, when someone just uses all, like, remember, did you ever, when you were a kid, like, go up to the fountain, uh, the the um, the fountain drink machine and just yeah. go, brruh, 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 yes, get all of them? Absolutely. And there, there's always a name for that, right? Yeah. And but this one would be like, all right, you want this? Do you want this regular or Janaea style? Like, ah, oh, yeah, let's we'll, we'll do Janaea style. Okay, you get all of the shimmer. Yeah. Every every you get flame, you get brain, you get <laughs> frost and silver shoes and. That's right. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. But yeah, uh, I would just say follow directions. And uh, I Am A Cat is just so much shimmer. It's kind of hard to compare. But if you were to use something a little bit more toned down and just added the right amount, I don't think you would experience a ton of clogging. Um, and I would just recommend Frost or Flame. Those are my favorites. Solid. Yeah, there's a couple more too, um, yeah. which we would definitely consider carrying. We need to kind of check to see how these are selling. But I mean, as long yeah. as people are buying them, you know, we'll keep selling them. I'd like to explore some more, but I think that kind of, you know, once we got them in, they were like, all right, you know, sales wise, they're like, all right, this yeah. sounds good. They're not like skyrocket, you know, everybody's using them. So yeah. they're an acquired um, taste. If you're really into shimmer and you're like, oh, I only have this boring ink. Yeah. How can I zhuzh it up? Boom, the potions. There you go. <laughs> Potion zhuzh. <laughs> All right, take us home. All right, so Gree asked, what collaborations would you want to see between any pen companies and any IP in the world? This was a fun one. This is. This was a fun one. And the first thing I thought of was a comment I made in that Banu video that I did because mm -hmm. um, I was – saying that, you know, I was commenting about how like, oh, there's always going to be a Banu pen for you. If you're a Taco Bell fanatic, you know, one day they're going to come out with a Baja Blast <laughs> pen. They would. And so the first <laughs> thing I went with when I heard this question was like, oh, my Baja Blast pen. Yes, that That's what awesome. I want. But then that kind of like took me off in, into another direction. I was like, okay, who actually owns Mountain Dew? Like, yeah. who who would be the one? And I realized it was uh, PepsiCo, um, who also own or are partners with Frito Lay. Cool. And between PepsiCo and Frito Lay, they basically own everything. Oh, they do. So, that's my answer. I want Banu to partner with PepsiCo, Frito Lay, cool. uh, and I want my Baja Blast pen. But I also want a Doritos pen because you know Banu, they will yeah. put some Doritos in there. Ooh, they would. You smelly. know he. You know he will. Well, I mean. I mean, that'd be amazing too, because they did corn oh. chips. <laughs> oh, Janae, Janae, because they did they did the um the uh what what what's the what what was the smelly pen? They have um, lavender, lavender, lavender. They did lavender yes. that smelled Dorito pen with Dorito mm. scent. Oh my God, yes, please. Okay, because <laughs> you know Alex over there, Banu, he would absolutely put real Doritos in there, and you could get like Dorito uh, essential oil. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Corn yes. Chips. Oh my God! Please. No. Yeah, yeah. You can't call it. No, no. You can call it Doritos because you can. This is a collaboration. Absolutely. This is a collaboration yes. we're doing here. Yes. Benu, Frito Lay, um, two titans of industry. 
<laughs> okay, so we're doing Doritos. We're doing, oh, they also own Tostitos. Okay. So we're going to have a salsa pen. Awesome. With like actual salsa in it, probably. I love that. And this one's for you, Jenea. Uh -oh. PepsiCo owns Quaker. Oh. Cinnamon maple <laughs> banu euphoria. Yes. <laughs> with the with the scent and actual bits of oatmeal Ooh, in there. Yum. I would I would cop my You would have to. <laughs> it would be called oatmeal supremacy. I love <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> they own Gatorade. So my favorite, like, so you could, so you could go classic lemon lime, okay. which is like the Gatorade color. That's like, you know, let's dump it on your coach sort of color. Um, <laughs> but then uh, there's that light purple. It's kind of like that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a good one too. Like a lot of possibilities with Gatorade. Yeah. Uh, Cheetos. Like when you want to smell Cheetos, but don't want it on your fingers. You there took you go. the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a Cheetos pen? The best of both worlds. Cheetos like, pen. Yes. And they also, they don't own Starbucks, but they, they own the Frappuccino drink, like the okay. bottled drink. Oh, so awesome. PepsiCo does that for them. So they could, they, you could do a Frappuccino pen. Yeah. Um, they also own Captain Crunch. Oh, I love that. Actual Captain Crunch in the pen. Love that. Or Crunch Berries, whatever you want. You can do Crunch and yeah. Crunch Berries. Nice. Sail the seven seas with your Captain Crunch pen. That's awesome. All right. So I'm going to leave that alone. Just saying. <laughs> PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, Banu. That would be awesome. I can't lie. Sky's the limit there. So that, that's my first IP that I'm going with. And <laughs> I will just say, what I don't want any of is I don't want any Mad Men pens. I don't yeah. want any Peaky Blinders pens. I don't want anything, period, because that to me says vintage antiques. And yeah. I'm here to tell people about modern fountain pens. That's my job. Like, uh, we're not going back in time. We're talking about what's what the industry and the community is living and breathing right now so i don't want to i'm if if peaky, that makes sense if 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 uh you know peaky blinder shows up you know and i see arthur shelby coming in be like i want a collaboration like no you don't you keep your collaboration off, off <laughs> don't want it go get out of here <laughs> anyway um and then uh, i was thinking uh my kid's really into one piece and okay. i was thinking that just picturing that pirate logo on the finial of a Retro 51. Yeah. I think a One Piece Retro 51 would be good. So we're going to go One Piece Retro 51. Awesome. Get them together. And then I'm going to go big. I'm going to go Monte Grappa because you know Monte Grappa does the big, massive, crazy yep. collaborations. You saw the James Bond pen. Yep. The Batman pen. The Year of the Dragon. Yeah, beautiful. I want Ghostbusters. And I want Back to the Future. Oh. I want the Ghostbusters pen to have like all sorts of proton packy stuff. Or you can nice. do Ecto-1 style, make it look like the car with like the red fins and a bunch of crap on top of it. Nice. They could they could do, they. I just want Monte Grappa to work their magic with both <laughs> Back to the Future and um, uh, Ghostbusters. So, that would be so cool. Uh, yes, it would. It absolutely would. Um, and then uh, with the Back to the Future thing, you know, just make it make them both look like the cars. Let's yeah. do that. Let's make them look like the Ecto-1 and the DeLorean time machine. That would be just, awesome. They, they can go with that. Um, and then finally... I want to do 10 pens um, with a joint collaboration with the American Film Institute. Oh, okay. So the AFI came up with a list um, in 2008 called um, AFI's 10 Top 10. Okay. So they've done a bunch of countdowns like throughout the years, but uh, this one was the top 10 movies in every genre. So I want there to be fountain pens that represent the number one movie in each of these genres. Wow. So and we're going to go through them. Yes. Top one animation out of out of the top 10 is pen, uh, Snow White. So okay. we're going to do a Snow White pen. Top one, number one out of 10, courtroom drama, To Kill a Mockingbird. I don't know how you're going to create that pen, but sure. Yeah. I mean, the second one is 12 Angry Men, so I don't know how you do that one either. But, you know, courtroom drama, yeah, good luck with that. But anyway, top, top epic movie, Lawrence of Arabia. That one they could definitely do. That's an easy one. Yeah. Uh, fantasy, we're going to go with Wizard of Oz. <gasps> Ooh. Gangster, we're going to do Godfather. Mystery is Vertigo. Okay. Uh, romantic comedy is City Lights. That was a 1931 movie that I have Never not seen. seen. No, yeah. no, it's a that's a that is an oldie of all the oldies. So I have to take a yeah, gander. 31. The only like pre 1950 movies I ever saw were back in school when we were doing film study. So yeah. those were forced upon me. Um, <laughs> number one science fiction is 2001: A Space Odyssey. Okay. And then number one sports is Raging Bull. Number one Western is The Searchers. So there we go. Those are 10 pens, 10 different genres. I want a pen representing number one from each of those genres. Cool. So there we have that. That would be awesome. Those are my IP fountain pen collaborations. Awesome. For me, 
I only had one that came to mind. What's up? And it would be a Sailor 1911, King of Pen. But have you heard of Attack on Titan? Yeah, anime? with the big, with the big, yes, big naked Titan. giants. Yes, yeah. I love like anything horror, like scary. Is it? Is it like? Because I've never seen it. Like, is it actually scary? Yeah. Okay. It's unsettling. So it's not like you're gonna be like ah. They just like kind of show up and eat people, right? Yes. Ooh. But it's like, it's so like unsettling yeah. because it's just like you see this. You can't do anything. You can't. Yeah. It, you're. What are you going to do? Absolutely nothing. You call, the, the, you call the jetpack sword people and they do you better their thing. hope and pray. They Wait, no, they it. don't have jetpacks. Right. Yeah, they do. They're jetpacks? Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought they were like ropes or things. That... Yeah, it's it's like these jetpack thingies and then they also have ropes. Okay. Like they can swing on those things, but okay. don't it looks, get caught I don't know, in a crossfire. I don't know why I haven't seen it. It looks amazing. I've only ever heard good things about it. It's amazing. Okay, so you want to attack on Titan? Yeah, but I want it to be a Titan. The Colossal Titan um, or cart titan just because he has such a grotesque look like i want something that people are like oh what is that i just love stuff like that and so i think that would be really cool the king of pens is pretty oh big. it definitely needs to be a king of pens yeah, yeah it's like it has so much canvas and you could just have so many intricate designs because the illustrations and so would you want beautiful. this to be like urushi like a maki sort yes. of thing oh i want it to be a trillion dollars you know only the real fans can get their hands on it you can have to do one of those like you know Shopify pay installment things yeah, on that one. For a <laughs> 72 year <Yeah>. installment. <laughs> that would be awesome. I think so. I just, I think it would be awesome. Like, it would be really cool. I would so buy that, but a girl can only dream. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think that your idea is probably a little bit more likely than Pepsi Frito Lay. So, you know, <laughs> we're not really, we're not really approaching this in terms of <laughs> realism and I know, right? <laughs> feasibility. <laughs> Cool. I love it. So why do they call him the cart titan? Well, he's just like carries stuff around, looks things around. Okay. So he's just like a he's like a pack mule. Kind of. He's actually one of like no offense, cart titan, but he's kind of useless. I mean, in yeah. In comparison he, to other titans. Sounds like, like he's just kind of a luggage handler. Yeah. Okay. He's but he, there but he, for morale. But he's freaky looking. Yeah. That, that, that's what you like. That's what yeah, I mean, like, think about it. You just need somebody to scare people enough. They all, have to do they all look plenty scary they from what are I've seen. Horrifying to be exact. <laughs> the armor titan is like he can destroy your whole village with like a couple two steps. It's spooky. And then they're like a million times your size. How often do they show up? Is it like, do they know when they're coming? Well, for a hundred years, I think that's what it was. It was, they thought that they built a wall and everything was all good. But then like the special Titans came because there's Titans that are brainless and that just eat humans for fun. Mm -hmm. Not even for nutrition. That's just their only pastime. They just eat humans. That's so crazy. It's kind of like me and cheese balls. (laughs) Yeah, if a cheese ball community had a gate. It's not for nutrition. (laughs) Had a gate around them. Oh, I'm coming and then down. And you just destroyed oh, the gate. Oh, absolutely. It's awful. Send them running. But, you know, they had, it's. I don't want to spoil it, but the new, t- like the special Titans come in at any given time and like completely upset way of life. And it was like a century of peace. Ugh. And then imagine you're just cutting your lawn one day and then you see like this Titan that the wall is like a million meters high and you see a Titan just looking over top of it. And you know that your demise is... On the horizon. That's exactly how they feel when the Utz cheese ball bucket gets opened up and they see me pull, pulling off that purple Yes. Lid. <laughs> they look at me peering down at them knowing sure they're, they're in, screaming. the end is nigh. <laughs> Drew's got that look in his eye. <laughs> He's going to get some cheese balls. That, I'm, that's actually precisely <laughs> what happened. Don't make happens. me feel bad about the cheese you balls. You shouldn't feel bad. The All Titans right. don't feel bad. They have a mission. I'm not a Titan. I'm just You're hungry. Not a titan. You know, I no, just no, want no. some cheese balls. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up the Q&A portion, everybody. You know what to do. You can email us at pencast at gouletpens.com. You can comment on this video. You can DM us on Instagram. However you need to get a hold of us, you know how to do it. We will listen. We will read. um, And then we will respond sometimes, too. So check that out. Um, We're going to move on to a segment that we like to call Meet the Team right now. Okay, we're not meeting Jenea today because we already met Jenea and she's here. So we don't need that. <laughs> um, but we are going to meet Katie and Katie is our fulfillment 
supervisor, I believe that the title was. This was just last week I talked to her, so I should definitely remember this. But um, we're going to be joined by Katie, and uh, she's going to sit here with me, and we're going to learn about the Katie in the professional world and the Katie beyond the professional version. And, uh, yeah, if you want to meet Katie, sit tight, hang on, and enjoy. Yes. Well, hello, Katie. Hi, Drew. How are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. It's Friday today where me and Katie are, so we are very happy. We've yes. got bright, sunny skies ahead of us having it be the afternoon on a Friday. So oh, yes. you're going to get all the positive vibes from us. Um, not to say that we don't enjoy working here. We very much do. And both of us have actually been here quite a while. It's been, what, 10 years for you? I hit 10 years in February. You just hit 10 years. I Boosh, did. You are a decader now. That's right. How about that? 10 I'm, years. I've joined and the club. Heck yeah. It's a nice place to be. So obviously we love it here. We have been here for a decade. And uh, while I have hopped around, you have mostly been in the warehouse, like with uh, teaming up with Adam for your mm -hmm. decade of work. So what, That's is, true. what is your role now? I'm currently the fulfillment supervisor. Fulfillment supervisor. Mm -hmm. So Adam being kind of the warehouse manager, he manages multiple departments. You are focused on the the packing and shipping aspect. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Gotcha. So you have to keep all, all those guys whipped into shape. I have to keep them in line. Yeah. yeah so K Katie has a reputation, jokingly, for you know being you know a hard driving you know crazy <laughs> monster, but she is one of the most <laughs> polite, kind people you will have ever met in your life. Um, but they like to they like to teach you about that because you are just exceedingly kind and nice. Oh, thank you, Drew. But not to say that you are also a very gifted leader and you can help lead and coach and all that stuff as well. You've actually got a lot of experience doing that too. Mm -hmm. I do. So you know, don't be fooled by her. You know, casual demeanor. She she mm -hmm. she gets the job done too. Mm -hmm. They um, call me no mercy. They do call her no mercy. <laughs> um, oh. So most recently, have there been any? sort of work-related wins or exciting moments that uh, you've been able to participate in? Yeah, um, we transitioned last summer from USPS to DHL. That's right, that was and a big so one. so we now have all brown box for shipping, so. So no more USPS white boxes. None of that, and a good percentage, I'm sure Adam has a more specific number, but a big percentage of the boxes that we ship out every day are 100% post-consumer recycled. Yes. Which is yes. a huge win. That is a huge win. And we're no longer using the plastic bub. Some of you guys remember back mm -hmm. in the day, everything is now brown, recyclable pa uh, packing. And that's great as well. So we are going away from the plastics and into the recyclable. Absolutely. And now like everything back there, you know, the packing stations are, you know, movable and stuff like that. Nothing's hard and set in place. How often do you mm -hmm. move those things, by the way? They, they're huge. Like, do you seriously mm. do move them around like at any time, at any time in the, in the year? Yeah, sometimes they're all, yeah, they're all on the casters now. Before it would take four people, one on each corner yeah. to kind of like, yeah, kind of move they were those. monsters. Mm -hmm. So we're actually talking about kind of doing a new rearrangement mm. just so we can get all the team a little bit closer because a lot of times they're kind of here, there, and everywhere, yeah, and they don't get like, to be together. You've kind of got a clump of four, but then you've got some satellite ones kind mm -hmm. of all over the place. So they really have a benefit, too, of being able to just kind of like talk and joke mm -hmm. and, you know, get the orders done. So you Have know, you we thought about something on the floor that kind of spins around? Oh, it's just my suggestion, you know, it might make some people dizzy, but I like it. You get different, I feel like different the, views. If it's at the right speed, I think you'll be OK. OK, we'll have to. Put also, that as as an intimidation tactic or a punishment, you can ramp up the speed as you see fit. <laughs> if someone's getting on your nerves, it's just Brandon out there. And, you know, you need to kind of just dial it up a little bit like, yeah, that's what you get, Brandon. I think that'll be extreme hacking. Yes, absolutely. All right, we'll try that. Nothing could go wrong. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Do you actually uh, find yourself writing with fountain pens often? I do, not quite as much as I used to, mm -hmm. but I've recently started just getting back into just note taking with them. So I have a couple inked up right now. The last time we spoke on video about mm -hmm. fountain pens, you said that the Banu Luminous Orchid, Orchid yes. was your go-to fountain pen. Has that changed at all or are you still luminously <laughs> orchiding it up? I still really enjoy that one. It's so pretty and it just it feels right and it writes so smoothly and i really really do like it um i also currently have um the kaweco iridescent pearl that's inked up as well because i, I didn't know you had one of those those are really cool they're beautiful and, and they're so popular i love pocket pens 
I think way, 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 way back, I don't even know how many years ago, I talked to Brian about pocket pens once That's upon right. a time. That's right, and you you are still an owner. I don't know if you still have it, but we once carried the Monteverde Poquito. I have it. You still do? Mm -hmm. That was a tiny, tiny it's pen. So have you Have you uh, used the Caveco Lilliput? I haven't. Okay, I'll let you use mine. It is fantastic. I have one of the green ones, which is the cheaper one. It's like 60 mm -hmm. bucks. Uh, it's aluminum, so it weighs nothing, but it writes awesome. The only downside is you kind of have to post it and you have to thread to mm -hmm. post. So That's it's like, right. yeah, you need a little bit extra time there. But seriously, it is fantastic. It shocks me every time. No, no, yeah, I'll let you borrow it. That's fantastic. Okay, sounds great. Um, let's keep going with hobbies here. What is your oldest hobby? The hobby you have had for the longest and continue Ooh. to have interest in? Probably just art in general. When I was younger, something me and my sisters used to always do, we would just draw. My dad worked with computers forever, and I can't remember exactly what it was called, but it was the printer paper that would have the little corrugated dot, 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 and it would all be in one huge long line. Uh -huh. And somehow we would have just cases of that at our house, and we would spread it out, and we would draw these like landscape pictures on I, that paper. I remember when I was in elementary school, there was the computer lab, and it was like a big deal. We got to mm -hmm. go and type things on the computers. And all of, all all they could do was just you know type words, but they had one of those printers mm -hmm. in the lab, and it printed out you know and it was like it was like a the paper was um, kind of accordion folded, mm -hmm. so you just keep, keep pulling it out right mm -hmm. yeah I remember that and stuff. then you could rip the little edges off and kind of like fold them and make them little yes I know those yes, yes. yeah that's mm -hmm. yeah that's fine and you you're a very crafty person mm -hmm. and you and your sisters as well like you, you've come from a very crafty family oh yeah I, I believe your mom is also super crafty isn't she no, no. not so much okay <laughs> not my so, mom that was um but uh she did participate in like renaissance fair stuff though right mm -hmm. okay yes. that was gonna be my next question um I want to take Shannon and Archer to the Virginia Ren Fair in May, I think. Mm -hmm. um, she's never been. Archer's never been. I've been once and I have no memory of it. It's a pretty big drive, isn't it? It's at the Lake Anna Winery. Yeah. So from here, yeah, yeah, depending on traffic, an hour-ish. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not bad. It's not bad. All right. All right great. No. Um, what, is, is, what should I be prepared for? Like, is it going to be, should I tell them it's going to be super exciting and fun or just be like, hey, just chill. We're going to walk around and look at some stuff. Like, Both. Okay, it's, good. It's awesome. They have a cast um, that is in like the the period where they are in like the move the mood. They role play. They you know will come up and talk to you and like quite, every, not like you don't have to do that when you go there though. Oh like, no no no. Okay, you, you can just go and walk around and have fun. But in regular be, clothes. Oh yeah, okay. but the cast will come up to you and they will question that weird little square in your hand <laughs> that you're like clicking around oh and my gosh. you know they, oh, it is it's super super fun That's but you funny. can buy all sorts of beautiful things from the vendors and they have the turkey legs and I love a turkey leg they have great shows I've seen like fire breathers and like the silk um what do they call it I don't know the acrobats yeah, that yeah, are on yeah. the little silk rope oh yeah. my there's all sorts of really fun things that is cool and you, you've you dressed up for these things before, right? Do you still have that stuff or have you just kind of like put oh, it up, yeah. up up with the mothballs and stuff like that? <laughs> no, I have some in my closet still. So um, my friends and I have made costumes. So that is crazy. For renaissance so, fairs, anime conventions. Yeah, that's the thing. So like the, the, art, the artistic interest doesn't just stop at drawing and, you know, folding <laughs> print, printer paper, you know, perforations. No. I also like, tried origami. Not so good at that. Well, the printer... Per the printer paper perforations, I cannot say that, that counts as origami. So <laughs> That's you're, true. you're great at that. Um, so yeah, like sewing and crafting, like, mm -hmm. you know, like you can do it all. I've made chainmail jewelry to Out sell. Of actual metal? Mm -hmm. To sell at the Renaissance Fair. What? Yes. That takes like a bazillion years. Have you seen they can do that with uh, 3D printing now? <gasps> they, can, they can 3D print chainmail and it's just there. They just. Oh, that it's super light too. Yeah, they just rip it off the backing and it's. It's chain mail. Like, I'm sure I shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> because they, I know that, like, I've seen videos of, like, the behind the scenes Lord of the Rings stuff and then making chain mail. Like, mm -hmm. it is tedious. Golly, mm -hmm. that is wild. It's also really fun because you could just, you know, put on some music or a movie and yeah. you've got your little project Make some chain there. mail. Absolutely. Wow. And you still have all your fingers. That is amazing. Ooh, I keep bumping this thing. I Sorry. know. That's okay. It might be a little bit too low. Brian hits it all the time, too, so don't worry about it. Um, 
that's really cool. I would like to buy a sewing machine soon, mm -hmm. but it, my my little I have a little app that like I can save up for stupid purchases that I don't need, which are quite a few. Hey, a sewing um, machine is a great purchase. It is, it is, and like, but I, I keep taking from it and buying other things that I don't need. So yeah, I need to work on that. Mm -hmm. Um, so question that's going to lead into another question. Yes, all the questions. Your partner, does he also do the Renaissance Fair thing? Does he have an interest there? He will go to the Renaissance yeah. Fair and he will actually be a good sport and dress up. So he okay. is not very crafty though, but he, he likes to go and walk around and enjoy the turkey leg and watch nice. the show. So well, you, what, what always like makes me not jealous, but I, I envy y'all a little bit because you have a lot of aligning interests, don't you? Mm -hmm, we do. Like you both love hiking. Mm -hmm. And you play games together and stuff like that, too? Oh, yeah. We'll play what, board what? games, video games. I see. Okay. Shannon does not. Like, we don't play video games together. It's a task to even find a movie that we agree on. Mm -hmm. there, there, you can you can get there, but, like, she doesn't watch sci-fi or anything. What What is it like having a partner that you are aligned with in the whole hobby sphere? It's really nice because we don't often, you know, disagree. It's oh, well, let's, you know, let's go out and do this. And it's usually involves like hiking or camping or doing something outdoors or, you know, every year for our anniversary, we go to a bed and breakfast and we usually go up into the mountains, drink coffee, play board games. So it's pretty nice. That sounds amazing. And both of you are like super chill people too. Like that's yes. what I get from, from y'all anyway. We are, which yeah. is nice. But then, you know, sometimes you need that like driving personality to yeah. like, you know, go and like achieve things and clean and motivate. Do y'all just motivate. have to flip a coin to see who's going to be the motivator? <laughs> yeah, well, usually, you know, I don't know, as far as cleaning, like he'll like do all the lawn work and outdoor things yeah. and I'll try and do that. I don't know, but it, it's it's a good balance. So we yeah. get along pretty well. That's fantastic. That is really cool. And um, the hiking thing, when was the last time y'all went hiking? Now that the weather is warming up, yeah. more frequent. Um, That's awesome because I... You know, we're we're not too far apart in age. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time just like getting out there and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, I, I'm out of shape, but uh, I just want to salute you there for that. Oh, thank you. There's a <laughs> lot of state parks around that are really great, and sometimes we'll go to Maymont. And do you have a favorite park? A favorite park? Ooh, that's a good question. Or favorite hike? Favorite excursion? Probably we like to go up to the mountains. Recently, we've discovered um, the Crozet Tunnel, oh, which oh. is a hike that goes into this old like train tunnel, and it is amazing. And you have to bring a flashlight, and it's so cool. How long is it? Like three quarters of a mile. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. It's not creepy. No. Okay. There's there's like <laughs> crawfish, crayfish. I think it's the those, same thing. Those little guys. Brian actually mentioned something about crayfish on the last mm -hmm. pen cast we oh. did. And I, it got me thinking, like, are crawfish and crayfish the same thing? I don't know. I don't know either. Somebody out there will know. Don't worry. Oh, I'm sure somebody yep. will. They always do. That's really cool. Um, we did a little, I was looking for trails kind of recently mm -hmm. and just ended up just doing a handicap accessible paved you got to you know, start walkway. somewhere, yeah. Well, I was thinking that like, well, you know, Shannon and Archer, they're not going to want to do anything. Mm -hmm. But then the final deciding factor was just my 40 year old left foot just decided to just start hurting randomly for no reason. So I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to just walk on asphalt now. Oh, it's okay. That counts. Yeah. It was still, it was still lovely. It was still beautiful. But I do want to do, um, I've never done humpback rock. Have you? Oh yes. Humpback rock. On a scale of one to 10, how hard is that? Hmm. I mean, it is, it's more, it's not long. Imagine you're a 40 year old, completely out of shape man. <laughs> <laughs> Five, six. Okay. When it first starts out, it, it, you, you increase in elevation pretty quickly, Okay. but it's not very long, like the All total right. distance, but you were like climbing a mountain, Whew. but the view at the top is I so know, worth it. I know. I want to do that. That's like. That's on my mm -hmm. list. Yeah. That would be really something. It's beautiful. Very cool. Um, do you mind answering a couple little lightning round questions yes. for me? Okay. Let's go. What's your favorite movie, Katie? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Clue. Oh, nice. Yes. That was where we first discovered that Paul Rudd was immortal. 
Oh, yeah. Because he kind of looks the same. Uh, he Yes, he doesn't age. I saw a picture of him and Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. And someone in the cap- caption said something like, the combined age of these two gentlemen is like 136 or something like that. And eh, can't comprehend. Like, they're they're not, they're immortals, both of them. <laughs> um, let's see, a favorite type of music. Oh, right now, well, with a six-year-old in my house, we've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift. Ah. <laughs> that is her new favorite thing. How um, does your daughter feel about Kids Bop? Oh, she loves it. She loves Kids Bob. Archer hates it. He cannot stand it. If they are at, you know, after school or something like that, and he has to listen to that, he's just, I don't know, whatever it is. I'm like, you're a kid. Come on. He's like, no, I hate Kids Bob. I don't know. He's a little grouch. Um, uh, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Um, let's see. What, uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, I kind of, we kind of, um, oh, a topic that you always immediately want to jump in on. Like if it's a topic and you're just like, oh, I got to talk about this. Like what's one topic you just cannot help but oh. dive into? Say, I've got something to say about this. I've got something to say. I have a lot of friends who have a lot of very strong opinions about things. Oh my goodness. This is like a hard lightning round, Drew. I mean, they're, they're good questions, but. It doesn't have to be too fast. You can take your time. I have a lot of them, mm-hmm. but I need to. I, I find myself needing to stop interrupting because I get I get really excited about a lot of things. I don't know, I like but I'm talk- sure you've never seen that happen. No. No, of course not. I like talking about, oh, I guess board games. That's kind of our new thing. There so you go. if there's something so new, if you're having new lunch, and exciting. If you're having dinner at lunch in, the ba- in, in there and you just hear rah, 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 board games, you're like. I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> when, where, let's do this. What have you been playing recently? Um, we've been playing a lot of Wingspan. Wingspan? Yes. Is that about planes or birds? Birds. All right. Mm-hmm. It's amazing and birds. It's wonderful. Birds. It, <laughs> it's a really good <laughs> engine building game that is just super fun and very replayable. Engine building. Engine building. So you have your cards and you have to work on creating a a long chain of birds that will have different powers and abilities, so that they give you more stuff and do more things, and you get more points. Oh, so they kind of like. So as you like, as like, you play cards, is it like resource gathering? Yeah, you can play your birds, get some food, lay eggs, get more birds, and you have to kind of play them on your board to kind of chain them up to do really cool things to get more birds and more food and more points. Huh. Interesting. It's very cool. Birds. Birds. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I feel good about that. I feel like we know the entire story of Katie. No, we don't. There's a lot to Katie to unpack, but that is the gist of Katie. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're just happy that you were here and happy that you joined us and happy that you do all the magic that you do back in the warehouse, making sure that people get what they need and they get it right. Because our Absolutely. error rate, thanks to Katie and her team, is like next to nothing. Mm-hmm. Like y'all do a fantastic job there. So Yes, we strive to have safe and accurate shipping and, you know, with a uh, culture of fun and results. There we and go. That's us. Well, you're a big part of that and we thank you for it. Thank you very much. All right. All right. That was Katie. All right. And Drew. And uh yeah. Ah, Drew from last week. <laughs> what a what a what a time. Yes. What a time to be alive last <laughs> week. All right. Uh we've got a couple more Meet the Team segments ready to go. Um, I think next week we'll probably take a little bit of a break because we want to hit a uh pen spotlight probably. But we've got more in the wings. We've got plenty of folks that uh you can meet and say hello to um parasocially. Yeah. So if you want that to continue, just let me know. Just always let me know. If you think something, if you think something's dumb or something's cool, let me know. I'll read it. And um, even if it's something I really like and you think is dumb, I will begrudgingly <laughs> understand. <laughs> all right. But that about wraps up all of the pen talk, all of the official stuff. All and right. at this point, Janae and I can just kind of uh, recount tales of our personal lives and uh, what we've been up to. So Alrighty. that is what's happening. So what's happening with me? Um... I had kind of a lazy weekend. Okay. I played too many video games where I probably should have been doing stuff, though it was a little rainy. Yeah. So I feel like I get a pass. Sure, time for off. Thank you. Um, played, I've been working through Horizon Forbidden West on the PS5. And this is my second playthrough of that. And it's been fine. It's been kind of like, it's my second time. And with, with second playthroughs, it's kind of like, 
am I going to like this more or am yeah. I going to like it less? And so far it's kind of a less, you know, Aww. I'm just kind of noticing that I have like less patience for, for like reading all the, or like listening to all the conversations yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah, I know, I know. So it kind of feels like I'm just kind of flying by, which I don't like. I like, yeah. I like immersing myself and I feel like, well, Drew, just do it then. But I don't want to. But I've already like, heard it. Yeah, so. I was just going to say. But then there are some games where I don't do that with. I'm like, I yeah. want to hear it again. So mm. for whatever reason, this one's not like gripping me as it did the first time. Yeah. But anyway, I'm moving on to the, uh, I finished the main story. I'm moving on to the this kind of like, you know, supplemental package, downloadable content sort cool. of thing. So that'll, that'll be new for me. So okay. hopefully that'll. Reignite some passion. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking that'll engage me a little bit. So. Yeah. Um, I sewed some new patches on my jacket. It's coming along. So, thank you. Yeah. It well, looks I, great. I, we, we, we ventured into the sleeves. So uh, <laughs> my wife, well, the sleeves were naked. So, and she's like, that looks silly. Add some stuff to the sleeves. So I was like, okay, twist my arm, buy new patches. So I've, uh, I recently added um, a Dick Tracy logo here. Yeah. From, from the old movie. Nintendo controller, um, a uh, Green Ranger symbol there. Um, uh, Jason David Frank, who played the Green Ranger, actually... Um, uh, used some fountain pens before. Um, oh, cool. We met an early end, unfortunately. Um, but I uh, got a Ninja Gaiden over here and then a awesome. symbol for Stephen King's Dark Tower movies awesome. right here, which I'm currently listening to for the first time. I've reread the whole series twice. Yeah. I mean, I've read the whole series twice. Haven't listened to them yet. So I'm kind of doing the audiobook thing. Cool. For the first time. And uh, that's, that's interesting because being a big fan of the series and it's seven books. I mean, going through those twice is a, is a, a thing, lot. especially for me. I'm not a huge reader, um, yeah. but then you hear names of characters that I'm like, well, that's not how you say it because that's not how I said it in my head. Yeah. So, but obviously like, thing. so I'm like, is this right? Was I wrong this whole time? But like you hear yeah. it in your head so many times and then you hear the audiobook guy reading it. Yeah. And you're like, oh crap. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's Cuthbert and not Cuthbert. Like, that's, that's why I like just reading it because when I read, I like to like have the theatrical release in my head. And so when you hear somebody else says it, it's like, ugh. yeah, I always wonder like, did this guy talk to the author like in yeah. depth, or did he just is this just him saying it? Exactly. So do I trust this as gospel, or do I just kind of can I ignore him? Exactly. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, but that's been nice. Um, cool. Let's see. Saturday, we went over to a friend's house and uh, had some lunch. We brought over some mashed potatoes and salad. And they had some steak tips and Yum. some uh, uh, baked cauliflower broccoli and stuff like that. It was a nice, nice little. Sounds yummy. It was a big. It was a big lunch. I don't think mm. that. I think both days this weekend, I didn't really do anything for dinner because I had such massive lunches. Yeah. Um, but that was nice. Then we came home and uh, I think we just kind of laid around on Saturday. And then Sunday, been, obviously, yeah. uh, we woke up and um, just kind of like did some chores around the house and then went to Easter lunch, awesome. early dinner with my grandmother and okay. my little family. It's a small little group. We all fit inside my grandmother's living room. It's really nice. Um, it's very, very pleasant. My cousin Sarah made banana pudding and Yum. it's it was the good banana pudding, not like the mm. bright artificial yellow banana pudding. Yes. It was like that creamy white banana pudding that was mm. kind of fluffy. Oh, my God. Did it have wafers? Oh, yeah. Yum. Yeah. But not but and, and they were perfect. They were they weren't like fall apart smushy wafers. Good. And they weren't crunchy either. They were that flawless consistency. Perfect. Oh my God. That sounds delish. When she said I could take the rest home, I was like, This is this is yes. the best Easter I've ever had. <laughs> um but Archer wanted to hunt for Easter eggs. Okay. And he's ten now, so I was a little unsure if he would want to do oh. that. So I was really happy that I'm glad. he wanted to continue that. Yeah, so that was cool. It was a little rainy and um yeah. I tried to be my me and my cousin Jacob. We tried to be a little bit more challenging, hiding the eggs. Because yeah. I'm like, hey, it's a ten year old boy. Like, yeah. he, we're not gonna be easy on him. Yeah. Um, and he's the only one too. So we want to make it a little bit challenging. So we started okay. opening up the eggs and like clamping them onto uh like leaves, like trees and bushes and stuff. Oh, cool. So he had to kind of like jump up and get some. And that is too cute. Well, <laughs> one of us, I don't really, I honestly don't remember who, um, <laughs> snapped it onto some random piece of foliage yeah and um it was like a vine or something and archer couldn't reach it so he jumped up and grabbed the vine and like pulled it down with his weight to kind of like i guess shake it loose or something yeah. and the vine had thorns on it <gasps> no yeah oh no so he got a little puncture in his hand <gasps> Um, he tried to kind of just power through it, but he it, he was hurt, and so we went inside, took a break, went inside, cleaned it up, got him a band aid. Poor so he baby. Came out. I know, I know, and 
I was like, oh man, like not like I didn't know he was gonna just like grab and pull it, yeah. and drag his hand down it. But of course, I also didn't know there were thorns in it. Yeah. I don't even know if I was the one that put it up there, but I definitely felt really bad. So, Aww. yeah, but he was cool. Yeah, we ended up having a great time. Oh, um, good. and uh, banana pudding. So, yeah, yeah. Um, he didn't eat anything though. We had Aww. like barbecue, coleslaw, banana pudding, and uh, yeah. um, you know, uh. Oh, what else did we have? There was some other. That sounds delicious. Notable. Oh, my mom always makes deviled eggs. Yeah, but, my mom did too. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that's her thing. That's like she always brings deviled yes. eggs to any family event. Um, but yeah, Archer ate like I think a plain burger Aww. bun. My sister yeah. used to be like that, but one day she just woke up and was like, "I want taste. I want. Flavor. I want flavor." <laughs> that's funny. We were like, "Finally!" He's, oh my gosh, join the club. He's gotten better. Yeah, but. Just today, um, Shannon texted me and said, I just looked at the uh, the school lunch menu. He's going to be hungry when he comes home. Aww. And I was like, oh, no, what was it? Chicken Alfredo. And I was like, oh, man. So, like, his his his, his uh, after school program, they do a really good job with food. <laughs> yeah. Um, but sometimes it's just a little, he doesn't like creamy stuff. And okay. so that's valid. He's going to come home and he's going to be starving. Something I know. I need food uh, now, Dad. I feel so bad. Aww. He's getting better, but he's still a ways off. Does he have favorites? I mean, pizza. Always p- pizza and mac and cheese. You kids know? love that. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm not hating kids. Mm, no. Nah. Um, no, I mean, I'll, I'll eat it for every meal. Um, in fact, uh, Brandon is, so we're doing like a late, late, late birthday event for Archer on Saturday. Okay. And because um, we went, we took him to Disney. Yeah, so yeah, he's, yeah. he's not giving a party. We're like, you know, he didn't get to have any of his friends over. So we're yeah. like, all right, we'll have your friends over. And then, you know. We'll make you some cupcakes or something. Yeah, fine. And we'll get some pizza. Uh, Brandon is going to come over for WrestleMania fine. on Saturday. We're watching WrestleMania. And uh, he was he was fine. like, you just want to get pizza or something? And I said, well, Archer's having a thing, yeah. so we're already going to have pizza. But I can have pizza again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to have pizza twice yeah, that day. Yeah. Pizza's fine. Pizza's good. <laughs> um, You know what uh, Archer, what kind of cupcakes Archer wanted? I was like, I was like we, can get, we can do cupcakes. I'm not going to do a whole big birthday thing because yeah. that, that has passed, but we will do something. What kind of cupcakes do you want? At first, it was emoji cupcakes. Cute. But you know which emoji he really wanted? Poo. Yeah. <laughs> so now it has transformed from emoji cupcakes <laughs> to just turd cupcakes. Oh, my god! So now he just wants all of them to be that with little eyes. He still wants them to look like the emojis. <laughs> They're going to be cute, though. I mean, I bought the eyes. Oh, yeah, I'm that making is them. Oh, I'm making so them. Cute. Yeah, so that's gonna be picture. that's gonna be my Saturday morning. <laughs> Are they gonna be chocolate cupcakes? Yes. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. It's like, all right, buddy, if you want turd cupcakes, I'll make some turd cupcakes. Kids just keep you young. It's, yeah, yeah. You know what? Like that is absolutely. so fun. Well, like my whole thing is like, would my dad? Do, would my dad do this? Nope. Okay, Archer. It'd you be betcha, like buddy. <laughs> oh. And then uh, we've, been wa- we've been watching season five of Fargo. Okay. Um, so those, though, all of those seasons have been great. None of yeah. them are uh, like continuous. Like they're not like the same character season to season. Oh, e- every what's that season called? takes it. Anthro and it starts with an A. Okay. It's a different storyline every season. Oh yeah, like American Horror Story. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Anthology. I don't know, I don't but it's good. Line. It's always really, really good. So <laughs> this one with uh, John Hamm and uh, um, oh, girl from uh, Ted Lasso. Girl who played Keely, I forget her name. I have no idea. But uh, no, she's good. They're all great. But that's been solid. That's been solid. Fine. So we, we reactivated Hulu for that. Okay. Um, which we had canned because we don't want too many subscriptions at the same time. But we jumped yeah. on. We we went ahead. We knew we wanted to watch Fargo, so we re-enlisted with Hulu. Yeah. So we're gonna knock that out, and then we're gonna watch Shogun. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna give it the axe again. I don't Hopefully. blame you. I'm, we're trying. I pay like we're, sixteen for Netflix. We're really trying. Well, Hulu's like seventeen now. Yeah, it's right. The commercial free one. 17 oh my bucks. Gosh. Yeah. Like I have the I have the free Hulu or the cheap Hulu that comes yeah. with like Disney Plus and ESPN. I have yeah. that, but Shannon's like, nah, I don't want commercials. So I don't 17, blame but yeah, so we're giving that we're booting that once we're done. I don't blame you. Yep. And then finally I bought I was saving up for a new computer. Um, mm-hmm. because I can't edit the videos that I took at Disney and I really yeah. want to do that because my computer's super old. But then I kind of emptied out that savings pile and bought something a little bit less important. So I've been wanting Yeah light up movie poster frames for my den because nice. I like movie posters and I wanted some that actually were backlit kind of like you see on the out, yeah. on the outside of theaters and nice. I, and there's this place that sold them they're pretty expensive yeah. but 
I have the movie posters now. Nice. I just need my frames. So I went ahead and bought the frames. Honestly. So I'm, sometimes investing in your space is worth it. I love my den. That's yeah. where I have my Pizza Hut lamp too. It's just, oh, it's, yeah. it's my space and exactly. I love it. It is so peaceful and so me. And yeah. so now the downside was that I don't have any outlets like directly where I want them. And oh, I need to plug in. Ooh. So now I get now I need to get electrical run yeah. like up behind the posters. Cause I don't want if I'm spending all this money, I don't want cords dangling. Yeah. You know, even if I put like, you know, a wire mold like down and to the left, they have a transformer that's attached to the cord that's like that big. You can't oh, you no. can't hide that. It's big and bulky. Yeah. So bulky. I need like a recessed outlet yeah. thing to put the you know transformer or whatever back there so i don't blame you now i gotta get that done so it'll be nice it'll be worth it in the end yeah. you just go downstairs and be like oh know. and the, yeah space. you can use remote and boop boop and i can nice. switch them out easily because you can you can open them from the front so i can do like let's do star wars let's do batman so let's do ready nice. player one and dune you know yeah but again now i've got another roadblock in the form of electrical contract work it's okay but i can't get that done until i get somebody to come and fix my gutters oh. so i got a whole thing but anyway i can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's, and it's shaped like really nerdy movie posters. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's, that's really awesome. I'm spending money on the important things. I feel you. But on I'm that. also saving up for the good stuff. Like yeah. you know, I know we need. Uh, you know, when we bought the house, there was some light termite damage. There was no evidence of termites, mm -hmm. but they said you still do need to have somebody come out. So yeah. while I'm buying all this stupid crap, I'm still saving up for that termite like good. overhaul, which is not fun, but I'm doing it. Only I've been disciplined. Good. So I feel like as long as I'm still saving up for the good stuff, I can spend money on some stupid stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What you been up to? Kind of the same, like when you're talking about savings mm -hmm. and things like that. So I'm going to Houston in Ooh. May. We're going to see Nicki Minaj. Oh, right. That's right. Starships are meant to fly. I didn't know you were going that far. I yeah. figured it was like an East Coast thing. So a funny story. I went on a cruise in like 2017 and we met somebody from Houston. But when we on the cruise, we docked out of Louisiana. So instead of leaving from like Charleston or something like that, all the people that live kind of like in the Gulf area or in Texas, they go to that port. So we exchange contacts and we've been friends ever since. That is cool. It is. I love her so much. Um, and I was like, well, me and my little sister, it's the first time we're traveling together. She's 21 now, which is like, woo, I'm getting old. <laughs> my sister's 21. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> Sure. I'm getting older. How about that? As are we all. <laughs> so we're going to go to Houston as a sister duo, and we're going to meet our friend. We're going to see Nicki Minaj, and we're going to explore Houston. Like, So, so you, you and your sister never, uh, never flown together? Just doing no. it? No. That'll be fun. This is so weird. I'm like... Where's our mommy? You're the... You're the <laughs> Where's our daddy? Yeah, you're in charge. <laughs> yeah. And it's so crazy because I'm like... Just let me do all the planning. You just tag along. Is she fine with that? Yes. Yeah. I've paid for everything. Yeah. I've done everything. Yeah. All she has to do is show up to a free trip. Do you like planning trips? I do. Yeah. I think it's so therapeutic to save because one thing about it, I don't like being in debt. I don't think anybody does. No. But I don't like splitting up my payments too often. Yeah. I don't like interest. It's spooky. It's scary. It's free money for them and no money for me. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been planning for that and everything's like done. And it's been really nice to just be like, I can pay my bills and have fun. Fantastic. It's amazing. I still owe my brother for a concert ticket he bought me for July. So I just need to pay him back before July. I yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's like, you're never getting anything. So. <gasps> she didn't say it. Like, she doesn't have to say it. Oh, <laughs> and you're okay with that? You know, she's the baby out of four girls. And it's kind of like... She's going to need to figure it out eventually. That's what I tell her every day. Oh, I'm boy. Saying, oh, oh. You're not eight years old anymore. I'm going to turn 22 and all I mean, she'll, she'll learn eventually, but you don't need to be the one to teach her. Yeah. You, 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 can, you can still give She's her some still fun. She's still in college, yeah. so we let her slide. She That's graduates right. in December. Um, and so she'll be in like nursing field and pretty serious stuff. So I'm like, yeah. be unserious as yeah. long as you can. Yeah, let her have some fun while she can because that, that's going to be a high stress situation yeah, absolutely. there. absolutely. But she has amazing patience. Have She's... you been to Houston before, like uh, mm -hmm. Texas? I've been once, but it was really quick. I went for one day because the next day I had a flight to Dallas for my friend's baby shower. Oh, wow. And so I was like, well, I can visit this friend and I can visit that friend. But I thought it was going to be like, oh, I could just rent a Hertz car and drive to Dallas. It's a big it's state. Three yeah. hour difference. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I need a flight. 
I mean, horrible feeling. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's bigger than like most European countries. Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah. Texas is bigger than like Italy, uh, France, all of those combined. Yeah, and it's just like wow, the U.S. is huge when you really think about it. It really is huge. So yeah, and a lot a lot of it, it's easy to you know feel bad that you know Americans don't travel as much as a lot of other yeah. people in the world. Yeah. Um, but. You know, and while we certainly could travel more, yeah, it's it's also you got to remind yourself that like the U.S. is freaking enormous, and yeah. you know, to get yourself into a different climate or into a different just you know uh, um, environment yeah. culture, like you know, there's a lot going on here that you can you can yeah. hit, hit up and without going out of the country. Exactly, and Texas just... is certainly yeah that it's. Huge. You can't take a train to Texas unless my friend took a train to Indiana once from Richmond and it took her not 72 hours. I'm going to go ahead and say like 36 hours. And then you have to think about like trains can just stop you for hours at a time because oh. other freight trains have to go by. I was like, your back didn't hurt sitting in that car all night long <laughs> what, is, what is the advantage of a train in the u.s she's terrified of flights and uh, you know let me not roll my eyes because i know that's a real phobia um but I, my phobia is my back hurting sitting in a train yeah all night long. <laughs> if I, I feel like if i was afraid of flying like i would i would just need to ask like what what is the max i need to do to move myself like where at what point can you i be totally knocked unconscious yeah like do I need to go through security and then I can get knocked unconscious? Or can I get knocked unconscious like at the gate? Like how far do I need to go before someone completely tranquilizes me? I, do I need to actually sit in the seat? I don't know. Because I would just go right up to that limit and be like, all right, who's who's going to inject me with whatever exactly. I need to just completely forget that <laughs> exactly. I'm alive? My friend, she because we're also going to Mexico for my birthday in August. Oh my gosh. I'm saving for that too. Wow, where are you hitting up a bunch of different cities in Mexico? Or so actually, it's going to be a cruise. Ironic, we were just talking about cruise. So we're going to leave out of New Orleans, oh. and we're going to go a five day cruise. We're going to go to Costa Maya, Cozumel, and then when we come back, we're going to spend the weekend in New Orleans because my other friend's scared of boats. So I have a bunch of scaredy cats in my. Wait, life. so you know about you some you know somebody in New Orleans as well? No, oh, okay. it's just kind of easy for me to leave out of. Um, I just felt like the options, the ship options are. More fun. They were more of my speed, and they were had the dates for my actual birthday. I wonder what are you what, what are you more concerned with, a plane or a boat? A boat. I think I am too. A boat is very spooky if you sit and think about it too much. Yeah. Because I don't. Have you ever been on a cruise? No. Oh my god. I, I don't know if I want to. Like cruises are huge, so it feels like you're like sweet life is at Cody. But if you choose to go like, oh, let's go look at the ocean and you're standing outside during the day, it's like, oh, cool. Nighttime is where you're like, oh existential crisis. Yes. Yes. It's like, and I hate to say this because it sounds so morbid, but when I think of like the Titanic, you know, when things happen on a modern boat, you know, you have all these backup stuff and right. you have to go through all this safety training. But back in the day, if it's pitch black like that and it's no power and all you hear are like, screams yeah oh man i saw i once saw a video about like you know what it would really look like to be in a lifeboat with the titanic because yeah. in, in the movie it's all bright you exactly. can see everything You're like that wasn't the case no it was pitch black no you, moon you had, no yeah. stars like Ugh! icy cold water okay yeah not going on a cruise yeah n yeah you enjoy Enjoy, enjoy your cruise. You know, it sounds worse, but when you're on there, you're like, ah, buffet, yeah. shows, comedians. It's really fun when you're, but it's so big, you don't realize yeah. that you're on a boat. But I will say, she, her phobia kind of was more like, we are in the middle of the ocean, going kind of slow. It's not it like It seems you're on a like it'd be one of those times, too. Like, if you want to take the beautiful side of it and just look out at the ocean, yeah. And it's got to be similar to one of those feelings about like kind of looking out into space where you kind of realize just how small you are. Exactly. And how kind of majestic the planet is Precisely. and how we are just nothing. Yeah. Like when you look out at the vastness of the ocean exactly. and you see nothing but, you know, just unexplored mass. Yes. Like that's got to be humbling and beautiful in its own freaky way. It is. It's very, I don't, you know, I'm religious, so I'm kind of like, wow, like. 
to look at this creation, you know, we're only accustomed to our creation on land, you know, animals and humans, but then you have this whole world underneath that you just don't know. And you can only explore it, but so much, mm-hmm. you know, you we really don't know what's underneath the water. Yeah. So that, that, that's got to be pretty... It is. Because that, that can be beautiful. You can get past the terrifying part. Absolutely. I mean, space is the same way. It's like you look out in your space like, wow, look at all the stars, and you realize, I am nothing. That so is you gotta, terrifying. You got to go right up until the point where you feel like your life is meaningless, like... To find just kind of the beauty. That, you know what? Yeah. I'm here, though. Yeah, exactly. I'm here. I'm a part of this wondrous yes. piece of cosmos. And, you know, let's make the most of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's it's an awesome feeling to just be like, wow, like I'm doing something like other people couldn't have done before. I love being in boats because it feels like cheating. Yes. Like, I, I, exactly. If I'm, when I'm in my kayak, just out in the river, out on the lake, yeah. I'm kind of like, Haha, I shouldn't be floating. But exactly. I am. <laughs> take exactly. that. Take that, in nature. Uh, yeah, I'm like, supposed to be sinking, but I'm not. Exactly. Because I'm in a boat. Serve, ice cream cone. I have relaxing. not done that in my kayak, but I want to now. On a boat, I probably will gain like 15 pounds. That's how you know it's working. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the food is unlimited. It's like unlimited. Activities. You gotta get your money's worth. It's so economical. If you have a family and you're like, oh, I want to take a fam out on vacation, but I don't have a million dollars. Like, it was only. Like four hundred a person. That's a that's a drop for a in, week for a five day cruise. That's a drop in the bucket compared to Disney. Golly, I can only imagine. That was painful. Five four hundred for one turkey leg. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. But Disney is so magical, though. I understand why it's worth it. It is, but you know, at the same time, like, yeah, it's it's kind of messed up because they can just keep jacking up the prices and people still pay. I know, and they're just doing it because they can. Yeah. And I'm still going to pay. Which yeah. It's disappointing. That's the worst part. I'm disappointed like, in myself. Fun shouldn't be this heart wrenching. I know. And also, <laughs> like, you know, you have to pay now to just get in the good lines. Yeah. And I'm like, isn't that a little classist? Like, yeah, you it know, is classist. I'm like, Ugh. absolutely. But yet, if we didn't do it, we would be able to ride like three things that day exactly. because it was so packed. And you wasted your time and your money. Yeah, so I'm like, I guess we can. I mean, at this point, you know, the thousands go by and they're like, what's another $25 a day, I guess. Yeah. But just makes you feel kind of icky. Yeah, so. it does. Now, cruise sounds good. That it's sounds cool. awesome. Like, but I, I totally get why people have their reservations. I probably just wouldn't look outside. Oh, don't. No. Also, I need. I, I, I get. Uh, I do get motion sick. My sister gets motion yeah. sick, and I, she just uses like Dramamine, mm-hmm. I think, and that does the trick. Yeah, they have a patch too. Mm-hmm. I love cruises, but all the way back to the initial point, cruise versus the airplane. Airplanes have like a one percent chance. Yeah, of airplanes crashing. are great. You know the mechanics on there. Yeah, master. Airplanes are great. I don't. I could. I love it. It feels like a roller coaster. I have yeah. my hands in the air <laughs> when we take off. <laughs> um, what else? I've also been doing Pilates. Oh, that sounds painful. It is. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, a good alliteration. <laughs> painful Pilates. If you think you're strong. Until you do Pilates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do that side plank and I bet you you won't be talking smack. But it's I did an, I did I have awesome. to I have talked smack about planking before until I did it. Oh yeah. Because you look at it, you're like, Psh, that's dumb. Easy. Right. Why are you sagging? Just do it. Right. And then I did it. I'm like, oh crap. No. Yeah. Try it and then you Foot have in to mouth. turn your body and raise your hand and mm. it's hard. But summer's coming. Are you doing like a video class or are you yeah. going like going in gym? I was trying out some YouTube stuff yeah. and then some like, you know, paid classes on apps because I was thinking about getting a subscription to Solid Core. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I saw how much it costs and I was like, mm, um, let me think of some other alternate <laughs> solutions. <laughs> and just doing the YouTube, the free version is like, man, weightlifting is a breeze in comparison because it's you're Weightlifting is quick, in my opinion. Like, mm. you just grunt and lug. And and I guess there are probably fewer body parts that you're actually utilizing. Exactly. But with Pilates, you're using muscles you didn't even know you had. Including balance. Exactly. Core, a lot of people's cores are not good, me included. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I could barely do a sit-up. I didn't even realize that I was that weak, you know. Lots of muscles in your arms and your back, but can you hold yourself up? Like, if you're on the Titanic, could you... <laughs> Hold on and pull yourself back up. I don't want to be the guy that falls and gets hit I by the propeller. The person, oh. <laughs> you know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be him. I got to work on my core. If only he worked on his core and oh, Pilates God, a little bit longer, it. he could have had a different. Oh, uh, we wouldn't have heard that sound. I know they were dead wrong putting that. <laughs> that was messed up. 
It's like, bang. I know, exactly. Uh, but that's what I think about when I do Pilates. Like, if I was hanging on a cliff. I, next time you do it, I hope that that guy pops in your brain. Oh, yeah. And I want you to, like, laugh and lose your breath. <laughs> totally screw up your focus and your concentration. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's, it's killer, but. I've been on a health and fitness journey. That's so. awesome. Yeah. That is impressive. I am Especially trying. from one who just lacks the all of the discipline needed to do that. I find it so very impressive when people are able to summon that. Yeah. I have joint issues. Runs in oh. my family. Boo. So it's like I find like back hurting, knees hurting, shoulders, you know, and then I type and sit at a desk. Hips yeah. are stiff. So it's been really awesome like to just try something new and just open up my body, mind to body connection. And I encourage more people to do it. Also, like from the mental health aspect too, just yes. doing something active can be a game changer. Absolutely. Like even if your body isn't really responding to a lot, if you don't see the pounds dropping off, if you don't see yeah. the muscles popping up, like knowing that you are an active person can change your Absolutely. outlook. Absolutely. Like it, it, it can work wonders. Like I find that to be the best case for me is yeah. like, if I know I have not been active, I feel just disgusting. Yeah. But if I know that I'm like, I'm doing something, it just, it yeah. changes so much. And it doesn't take a whole lot. No. Just to know that like, semi-active versus not at all active like big yeah di- big it makes difference a there. huge difference yeah and just knowing that you it can does. like convince telling you know showing yourself that you can do something yeah um can fix a lot of stuff absolutely set you on the right path yeah i was one of those people that fixated on like scale numbers oh oh let me run a 5k every day and i gotta do this and i gotta count the my calories. scale is evil it is evil and you know i don't like to weigh out my food and you know it, it kind of like gives you this you have to be perfect feeling. But with Pilates for me, I've just felt like, it's like, I know I'm getting a great workout, I feel it. And it's just so calm. Like all the Pilates instructors are like, take care of you, you know, Zen, meditate. And I feel like I've, I feel healthier doing this instead of, you know, like gym rat and calories in, calories out. Not it all, can not, be toxic. I'm not gonna say yeah. it's 100% toxic, but if you already are like feeling insecure and things like that, it can make you, it can be anxiety inducing. And so I just, I really enthuse Pilates, just even the free version, you know, I told you I'm still thinking about the classes, woo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome, it's a great pastime and I've really just been enjoying trying something new. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's already a heck of an achievement. So hope you're proud Aww, of yourself. Thank you, I appreciate you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. We got all that wrapped up? Fantastic. All righty, well, that is it for what's happening. We will uh, finish up and then we'll get out of here. So let's wrap it up. Okay, thank you so much for sticking with us this long. I know it was a short one, but uh, we got through everything we wanted to get through, and we know that we're going to tack on a couple extra minutes for Katie here, so uh, hopefully it won't be too short for you. I know that some of you just really crave those two-hour, 20-minute ones, but uh, hopefully let, let, let's let the people who don't enjoy <laughs> enjoy this one a little bit more. Um, so again, please leave us feedback, pencast at gouletpens.com. Hit us up on Instagram, comment on YouTube. I see it all. Even if I don't click the little heart, I see your comments on YouTube. I love them. Thank you. Even if you just want to say hi, that's great too. I will say hi back. Yes. Um, and then check out gouletpens.com. All of the new stuff that we mentioned are going to be listed below with links. If you've watched it this far, I should have said that earlier when we were actually talking about the products. But <laughs> anyway, I'm saying it now. Click below, and click through the links and learn all about the Platinum Izumos and the uh, the, 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 the sea Turtles. Turtle rescue. Yes, Woo! Sea Turtle Rescue. <laughs> um, and then um, subscribe, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff, please yes. and thank you. And... I've got a fun fact um, that uh, I'd like to share um, because American Film Institute, so, so the AFI Top 100, um, in 2007, they redid their entire uh, like Top 100 movies of all time list. Ooh, awesome. So they did it in 98, and then they redid it in 2007. So okay. their top updated one, you know, I'm going to just, let's see, let's talk about the top 15. Okay. And... Uh, I just want to just kind of mention those as a little trivia fact. It's something you can find on Wikipedia. Nothing secret here. But uh, 2001, Space Odyssey is number 15. Okay. Number 14, Psycho. Number That's 13, movie. Star Wars. Um, number 12, The Searchers. Okay. Number 11, City Lights. Number 10, Wizard of Oz. Number 9, Vertigo. Okay. Number 8, Schindler's List. Hmm. Number 7, Lawrence of Arabia. Number 6, Gone with the Wind. So now okay. the top five. 
Okay. All time best films, according to the American Alrighty. Film Institute. Singing in the Rain. Okay. Raging Bull. Casablanca. Yeah. The Godfather. Yeah. And Citizen Kane. Okay. So. Hmm. You know. Of all time? Of all time. Well, no, no. Um, this is 100 years, 100 movies. So okay. um, I think that it went from, uh, I don't okay. know what the time is, but um, uh, well, maybe they might have added more. I don't know. But uh, yeah, pretty much of all time. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. I, I would have to revisit some of these. Like, again, I've never seen City Lights. Um, yeah. And I've actually never seen Singing in the Rain either. So I can't comment on that one. Yeah. Um, Citizen Kane is interesting to me because yeah. they rank them based off of one of the criteria was um, popularity over time. Okay. You know, that includes like uh, cable airings, television airings, you know, DVD, VHS sales and rentals. Yeah. Uh, I, like Citizen Kane, like, I don't know, for longevity, like, did, did, do people still watch that movie? Like, no, I don't think so. We watched it in film school. Because it was very important at the time, like they, yeah. they did a lot of new things that hadn't been done yet yeah, up, up to sense. that point. Like it's a, it's a it's a it's an objectively important film. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as like interest over time, like I, I, I don't I just don't yeah. know. Like I would think more Wizard of Oz because that was also iconic. Yeah, yeah, and that one still gets watched. Absolutely. Citizen Kane, like I don't know. I don't. That, to me, it, it, yeah. it's hard for me to gauge because when I was in school. Anybody that was trying to be like the hipster film school kid yeah. said Citizen Kane was their favorite movie. That makes sense. So for me, I just think of those kids They're like, oh, Citizen Kane's the best. I'm like, mm, is it though? So I'm I, I, I'm a little biased in my opinion because I yeah. can't help but think of them. Um, <laughs> Godfather, definitely. Number two, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, so, I agree. I don't know. It, it was pretty cool. Um, hmm. And then um, let's see, all the way down to number 100. Let's see what the final one is that just snuck in there. Ben-Hur. Okay. I've never heard of that. Um, it's fine. <laughs> I do remember it was in 1959, and okay. it was basically like, uh, did you ever hear of Mon Count of Monte Cristo? Mm -hmm. It's basically that, but biblical. Oh, wow. kind of like you know he mm -hmm. he's a he was a you know kind of high society okay you know uh, Judean I believe, mm. um, and uh, he got wrongly convicted, okay. went to prison. Got befriended by a guy who had a lot of money. Yeah. And then, or shipwrecked or something like that. So okay. it, it was actually written by um, a, uh, a politician, I believe, a Lou Wallace. I don't remember what he was, if he was oh, a wow. governor or something like that. But yeah, I don't know. Um, it's good. It's, okay. it's solid. It was Charlton Heston, you know, okay. back in the day. Yeah, solid. Wow. Anyway, American Film Institute top 100. They have like calendars where you can like watch all 100, you oh, know, and kind of mark them off on your yeah. thing. So it's a big That's deal. Cool. I know a lot of people that have started that list and not yeah. finished. It's kind of like a thing. That... What's it based on? Like just people that are super en engrossed in the film community? I, I, or no, I, it... the American Film Institute must be made up of a bunch of people yeah. who know their stuff. I don't okay. really know. But uh, yeah, there's some solid entries on there. Where if is anything, Shawshank Redemption? I'm sure it's on there. Okay. It should be. Now, that was the first movie I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a fine film. That movie and the other guys? I think no. What's the movie with Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Where he was pretending the whole time. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh, uh, Usual Suspect? Yes. Yeah. That movie. Spoiler alert. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's fine. It's it's been it's like been <laughs> You haven't seen it by now. Yeah, it's been decades. <laughs> that no, movie. No, it's fine. Also, I... nobody's listening to this point at this oh, point. Oh no, they might be. Yeah, they probably. Oh, Shawn Shake Redemption, number seventy two. Okay. There we go. Okay. I don't think Usual Suspects is on here. What? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's it's, my it's good, gosh. but I, I don't think it's top one hundred good. Really? I mean, I like. I'm it. biased. I'm I like, like it, but like movies like that, it's like how many times can you really rewatch them? Because True. once you know what happens, yeah. so you, you watch it once not knowing, and then you watch it again trying to pick up the signs, and then you're kind of done. Yeah, so I, I, feel I, like would agree. Got, I feel like it's got two solid viewings, but yeah. I could be wrong because I, I do really like that one. Um, that makes sense, though. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's solid. All right. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for sticking around with us. Um, we appreciate you, Janae. We appreciate you standing in here, yes. avoiding a pen cast cancellation, or <laughs> more terrifyingly, in avoiding me sitting here and talking to myself for two more hours. So. No. Yikes. <laughs> um, it's giving me nightmares. Um, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you. Have fun. Right on. Bye-bye.